A compact group. That's what Coach Chad Miller is looking to do here. Play behind the ball. Don't allow the Blue Devils to make headway in the final third. See if they can keep this game close. And you never know what happens at that point. And of course, on the other side, there's Michelle Cooper. Fabulous freshman for the Blue Devils. Ruthie Jones, as per usual, gets the start in net for the Blue Devils tonight. Should be a good one as we get things off and going from Durham. Opening touch of the match belongs to the Blue Devils. Much of a feeling out process in the first four to five minutes of a contest like this, just to see which side might dictate the style early in the contest. And if it plays true to form, the Blue Devils should dictate play throughout the game tonight. There is no question a, a talent disparity. It doesn't mean that the, the result is already written. It's why you play the game, but certainly this favors the Blue Devils in terms of the matchup. And so for Western Carolina, it's a matter of getting Duke off its game, all things being equal. White jerseys, just a bit more talented than the opposition here this evening. Throw in here for the Blue Devils. That's one thing that Robbie Church said he wanted to see a lot of tonight. A lot of long sustained possessions for his club, and already the Blue Devils have had possession really for the first minute of this contest. That ball feathered down the field. And a throw in for the Blue Devils is. We take a look at the keys to the contest. We'll start with Western Carolina, which you believe are important for the Catamounts. Yeah, got to build good habits in this game. Honestly, a lot of times in situations like this, the result isn't necessarily what matters. You don't show up someplace hoping not to get a result. But if you can leave here tonight, if you're Coach Chad Miller and you're a better team than when you got here, you feel good about that. And it's about putting the pieces together. This is a long road. It's a long season. Honestly, in our conversation with Coach Miller, basically saying we'd love to have this thing figured out in time for conference play. Ton of new bodies. You mentioned all the underclassmen in the open. Just so much to figure out so far for the Catamounts. It's not going to happen in an instant, but 90 minutes, maybe more tonight is certainly a couple of steps along that pathway. And a big roster for Western Carolina as well. 36 players on the roster for the Catamounts this year. Coach Miller talked about how tough that is to juggle all the playing time and keeping everybody happy on a roster of that size. Yeah, and just not a lot of practice time. All the fall teams cope with this, where you have everybody coming back off summer. You don't really know who's put in the work, who hasn't, how closely have they adhered to whatever schedule you wanted to put them on from a strength and conditioning standpoint. So they show up. You might have a couple of practices. I think for Western Carolina, they had five before their season started. And you're going to try to integrate all these new pieces. We talked about how important McNally and Percy are, but they're still transfers. They're still new to the fold. Whether they have the experience or not, they don't have the experience in this system. So it takes time. And, and all of these fall sports, women's soccer, of course, included in that, they're behind the eight ball a little bit when it comes to practice time. Uh, some of these cl clubs like Western Carolina, like Duke, also had seasons in the spring coming off of that pandemic season. So a little bit of a misnomer this year for everybody because you're sort of figuring things out the first couple of weeks of the season. No part of the last year for anybody has been normal. And college athletics certainly not immune as Tess Bodie charges into the 18-yard box. And take a look at the keys for the Blue Devils tonight as Duke has a throw in. Take care of business. This should not be a 0-0 game. If you're Robbie Church, you want to be able to get fresh legs into the lineup, start developing some depth, give your traditional starters a chance to rest. You've got a game in a couple of days against Vanderbilt. This is not a game you want to mess around with. And frankly, he's admitted they've given up some goals that he doesn't think they, doesn't think they should have. Uh, they've gotten results. They've gotten wins. They've played really good teams. They've only conceded twice, once against Arkansas and once against Washington. But uh, still not thrilled. So this is an opportunity put a clean sheet out there and build some momentum for the Commodores. 50-50 ball in the middle third. That'll be a foul on Western Carolina. An opportunity for the Blue Devils here. Sophie Jones flips one ahead. And now this way it comes for Bailey Brewster, who makes her first career start in a Duke uniform. Brewster, somebody who's already come on a couple of times this year, figures to play a significant role for the Blue Devils going forward. This is Cooper in the middle. Boy, she has really created for the Duke so far this season. Western Carolina right there to thwart the chance. Caitlin Cosme traditionally plays one of those center back roles for the Blue Devils. We'll probably see her a little bit later tonight. Brewster getting the start, though, in the meantime, trying to manage the legs a little bit of Cosme, who was already 
Played a ton of minutes this year, the most on the team. One of the things Robbie Church said for really all of his team, you're either managing minutes or trying to get people minutes because he knows how important the depth for this club is going to be as they get into ACC play in a couple of weeks. After tonight, just three games for the Blue Devils before conference play starts. Western Carolina still a little bit of a time, but the Catamounts beginning a three-game road swing tonight, which will take them both to Gardner-Webb and Davidson in their non-conference schedule. Through the middle, Duke looking for an opportunity. This way it comes for Delaney Graham, looking for an angle to cross perhaps as she heads toward that touch line, goes near post, but it's batted away, and it'll be Western Carolina looking for the clearance. So far, so good for the Catamounts. No real dangerous opportunities for Duke. The opportunity on the far side, Cooper trying to turn, met there by three purple jerseys. It's exactly what you're hoping for if you're Coach Miller to start this game. To your point earlier, Coach Miller admitted that they were not going to play this game like they did against UNC Asheville, a game that they played a week or so ago, got the 2-1 to one victory. Much different style of contest for the Catamounts tonight. We had a chance to ask him, what's the balance that you try to strike between altering your game plan to get a result versus just playing the way that you figure you're going to play the entire year? And if you take a loss to a team like Duke, do you care about that? And didn't really hedge one way or the other, but said it is absolutely a balance. And they're going to come out here and play compact. That, in his mind, gives them the best chance to get a result here this evening. We'll see how it plays out. Of course, strategies can can change depending on time and score, but still scoreless here through the first six and a half minutes or so. I think that speaks to your point earlier of only having the five practices to get ready for the season. Still trying to learn a lot about his club. And this is a chance for the Blue Devils. Pluck had that one poked away as she got into the 18-yard box. And there's McNally, the veteran, the transfer. Really organizes that back line for the Catamounts. Was a team captain at IUPUI. As you mentioned earlier, played over 70 career games. Now another chance for the Blue Devils. Looking for an angle, and that one poked away nicely by the Catamounts, but not totally out. And plenty of room to operate here for the Blue Devils. Brewster. This way it comes, Delaney Graham. And again, knocked away by the Catamounts. Blue Devils are trying to build a chance here. But Western Carolina so far has been able to keep anything out of harm's way. Royson feeds one on away now to Katie Groff. Back through the middle, that one blasted from distance. It might have been deflected by a catamount and should result in a corner here for the Blue Devils. Cooper showing just how many different ways she can attack you there. Just a simple touch and lines up the shot from about 25 yards away. She scored from that distance earlier this year. Tied the game up against Arkansas. And now it's McKenzie Pluck to take the first corner of the night for the Blue Devils. That one's headed near the cage. Guess who? 18, got a head on it. Kept in for the Blue Devils. And now back out to Cooper, who misses just what? Cooper just peppering the 18-yard box, the 6-yard box. Ashley Owens is going to be busy tonight. And 18 is going to be one of the big reasons why. But you saw a little bit of everything there. Just cherry picking, trying to clean up the loose change, top of the 18. Blue Devils already pressuring here as Western Carolina trying to build the attack. The Catamounts have not crossed the middle third yet with possession tonight. I like that from Duke because if Western Carolina is allowed to settle in, it's harder to make headway with that compact, you know, 10 behind the ball. But if you can press and create a turnover, unsettled defense, there's some openings there to exploit. Some room to operate here for Valentine Percy, the graduate transfer, but the Blue Devils swarm quickly to the ball. And... The Blue Devils are awarded the throw in. You mentioned, mentioned Ashley Owens, the keeper for Western Carolina a moment ago. Great leader, unbelievable program player for Western Carolina, but hasn't got a lot of action. Playing because of Melody Mezzanine, still out. She's missed the first couple of games of the season. Western Carolina hoping to have her back for the game against Gardner-Webb, but some depth being built at the keeper position for the Catamounts early this season. 
Yeah, somebody just hasn't gotten a lot of playing time, but it hasn't prevented her from being an important contributor to the program. Got her first career win against UNC Asheville, 2-1 victory for the Catamounts. Always good to see somebody that's put in the time get rewarded in that way in their senior season. Tess Bodie out toward the middle. Katie Groff and had that one batted down. It'll be another throw in for Duke. About 10 minutes into this opening half, what's your synopsis so far of our contest? A little bit of what I think we expected to see, frankly. Duke absolutely dominating possession. I don't know if the Catamounts have connected a pass on their offensive side of midfield yet, and yet bend but don't break. Fully embracing that concept and that philosophy, and they've done it successfully thus far. Feathered in. Catamounts right there. How difficult is it for Western Carolina as a player to go from playing one style last time out to a totally different style in this game tonight? It's not easy, but it's what's asked of you. And that's that's a little bit, especially for the youth on this team, freshmen and sophomores, that's how you're going to have to play college soccer. You're not going to be able to dictate your system on everybody, particularly somebody like Duke. So you've got to be able to make adjustments going into a game. You have to be able to make adjustments within a game. And so this, how Western Carolina started might not be how they finished. And, and it's a great test. And that's part of the maturation process is going through that and having somebody like Duke press you and not give you the time to think, not give you the time to analyze and be able to figure it out. There's no timeouts that's right. in the sport. Yeah. Uh, you're not calling a 20-second timeout and have a chat about it. It's all going to happen while the ball's in play. Duke with some room to operate here. This is Nabed, who was taken down, and a great chance for the Blue Devils here, maybe from distance, to put one on the cage. I'll be curious to see what Duke does here. Probably a bit far, be an ambitious strike from close to 30 yards as we see Sophie Jones play it out wide. Right back to Jones. Spins away from it, a defender. Funnels one to Cooper. And maybe a little bit too much pace on that pass, but there's a chance for the Blue Devils, and it's chipped just wide by Delaney Graham. Normally, maybe too much pace. Not when you have the pace of Cooper chase that one down. She and Delaney Graham have combined on a couple of opportunities here in the early going. Tough ball for Graham to handle. Driven well. Cooper, Cooper's first step is so quick, able to get by defenders. Robbie Church talked about how he knew that Cooper was going to be good, but I think even Robbie Church and his staff surprised at the start that Cooper has had to start her collegiate career. Yeah, he just said, yeah, as a coach, you don't want to jinx anything, but the very first time I talked to him, he said, she's special. She's, she's going to be one of the best players in the ACC. She's one of the best players that's come through here in a while, and Duke's had some a, a lot of talent. They've had pros playing that same position. They're in the NWSL as we speak, but Michelle Cooper has it all. She's got the full package, pace, touch, able to facilitate for teammates. And with that combination of Pluck and Cooper, as a defense, now you're in a bit of a pick your poison scenario. And the cumulative effect of having to deal with both of them simultaneously, you could already see these are two top 20 teams Duke beat in Arkansas and Washington. They couldn't solve the riddle. It's going to be hard for anybody to, to find the solution this year if they can stay healthy and continue to, to work on their chemistry. Cooper's already etched her name into the Duke record book, just the seventh player in program history to score a goal in each of her first two starts in a Duke uniform. Taylor Rassiope, I believe, back in yep. 2015 was the last one to do that. Bodie. And that one just a little bit too long on the run there by Olivia Migley. Migley, a goal scorer in her own right, led the team in goals with six as a rookie a couple of years ago. And now some of these players can maybe wait in the background a little bit for the Blue Devils. With all the focus being on Pluck and Cooper, could be anybody for this Duke team, any night. Yeah, there are a lot of options for Duke. No doubt the depth, much improved. It's a team of reminiscent of the, the 2017 team for Coach Robbie Church, at least in his eyes. And again, it's early. You don't know how this is all going to play out. Everybody, fingers crossed that, that all these programs stay healthy. 
Go kick coming for Western Carolina as Cooper was on the charge again for Duke, but had it ferried away. Actually, I beg your pardon, it'll be a corner kick for the Blue Devils. The thing I've been maybe most impressed with, because the skill, the talent, everybody kind of knew that that was going to arrive with Michelle Cooper. What I've been really impressed by is her fitness level. At the end of games, she looks like she's just getting started, and everybody else is needing an IV drip on the sidelines. So impressive for the rookie who blasts this one from the top of the 18, but that's just wide of the cage. Yeah, she tried to bend that one, didn't miss by much. Great start for Cooper. Already four shots for Duke in the contest tonight. Just bends that one. I mean, that skips probably a foot wide. Did not miss the post by a whole lot there. As Catamounts try to possess, they, just, they literally just cannot connect more than one or two passes. It is desperate defending right now. Tess Bodie in the middle there for the Blue Devils. Back to this club after being drafted into the NWSL last year. Knocked down. Duke with a nice run there from Lily Nabet, but unable to get anything together. Now they'll try to build again. Guess who? It's Cooper. Feeds one away for Pluck. It's been a dangerous combination for the Blue Devils this year, and that one knocked away. Nice slide there by Western Carolina, but I believe we'll get an offside. First offside of the contest. Everything but the finish so far for Duke. Go, go, boy, go! I feel like Robbie Church likes the start for his club tonight. Has to. Uh, everything but the goal. You know, probably doesn't love that it's 0-0, but they've dominated possession. Another set-piece opportunity here. Come on, Come on, Bodie quickly plays one. This is Delaney Graham looking for an angle to cross, perhaps. Back this way it comes for Brewster. And now Duke will once again head back toward the center third and reset. Western Carolina with a brief possession before Duke takes it away again. Yeah, and that's that's good stuff from Cooper there. It was a loose touch. It was a giveaway. It was unnecessary. Go get the ball back. And she does. And wins possession back for her team. That's the way to make up for a mistake. Some fancy dribbling there for the Blue Devils. One of the ways Duke is going to have to attack this Western Carolina club tonight. It's with the dribble. Sophie Jones. Now into the middle, Blue Devils start to drive. This is Pluck. Pluck to the top of the 18. Got tied up. Ball still loose there, just outside of the six-yard box. And Western Carolina will just usher it across the touchline. May have been an opening for Pluck to shoot there. Might have been one or two touches too many. She has that ability to score from distance. Step, step. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Pluck gets it right back on that touchline. Just outside the 18, chips one in. And again, it's punched away out toward the center third. Cooper again with some space to operate. And that's just off the boot of Graham and up to play it is Ashley Owens, the keeper. If you're Coach Chad Miller, the thing you don't want to see in those situations is Pluck and Cooper there in consecutive possessions were able to turn immediately. First touch, turn and face goal. That is not how you're going to have success in this game. You have got to have somebody on their back, force them to play it away from your goal, take a couple of extra touches, find an outlet pass. But for 24 and 18 to just be able to turn around and face goal without a defender within five to eight yards of them, that is not going to work here in the long haul. He said he was more focused on his own club versus who Duke had on the field, but hard not to focus on 24 and 18 in white. More room to operate here for Duke. This way for Delaney Graham. Right back toward the middle and Lily Nabet. And now from the center third, Duke builds again. Driven away, but not totally cleared by Western Carolina. It's almost, to borrow a hockey term, the Catamounts need some sort of icing here. <laughs> Just to get the ball out of their attacking third or their defensive third. 
Yeah, Duke's gonna have to get its mail forwarded <laughs> to the final third. Brewster, right through the middle. Blue Devils trying to string something together with McKenzie Pluck. Pluck into the 18, ball on her left boot, looking to drive one, punches it away. And it's Delaney Graham who fights for it for the Blue Devils and puts one toward the cage that Owens makes the spear on. Very similar to a situation a moment ago. That time, Pluck does pull the string. It gets deflected before it ever gets to goal, but made the adjustment there. Take another look. It was right here last time. She took an extra touch or two there. Tries her luck. Nice play defensively, of course. One Again, credit, credit to the, the Catamounts. This is a 0 0 game. They have absorbed all of this pressure. A couple of relatively dangerous chances. I'd say, you know, better than half chances, but nothing really dangerous in close. But for a team that hasn't had any opportunities in their attacking third, in their final third, how much does it weigh on a team to continue to try to fight off this Duke offense moment after moment? Yeah, it's relentless. And then you combine that with Duke pressing on goal kicks. And as soon as Western Carolina has the ball, that's where you start to feel suffocated. It's one thing to defend, but if as soon as you have the ball, there are people in your face again and, and you, you possess it for 10 seconds. This is Cooper who drives one toward the goal and scores her third of the season. Yeah, a matter of time for the Blue Devils, Cooper. Able to finish that one. Third of the season, now scored in her first three games. We'll have to get an update on the stat you mentioned a moment ago. But first touch, well placed, didn't over hit it. Didn't try to be too perfect, just converted. And now the Blue Devils breathe a little easier. In these games, when you know you're the favorite, you've had literally almost all of the possession, you look up and see 0-0, sometimes you get frustrated. one nothing feels very, very different. And it follows the script a little bit for Duke and what they want to accomplish in terms of getting minutes for everyone this evening. That's exactly what you're hoping for. If you're Duke, you'd like to see probably 2 nothing at least at halftime. But now Bodie with a chance. Able to keep possession. Back to Cooper again. The bet. Now this way for Delaney Graham, who's had a couple of looks at it this evening. And a hard takedown there of Mackenzie Pluck. No foul was called. It's just a play on. No, they did call a foul. Beg your pardon. A late call from the official. The call came from the head official. Pluck was looking at the referee's assistant, who didn't raise the flag. Certainly a foul, though, there from Caitlin Galbraith. And an interesting angle here for the Blue Devils to try to operate a set piece. Yeah, it's a pretty similar to a corner kick, really. Test Bodie will put it in play. Already three fouls on Western Carolina this evening. Bodie curls one toward the top of the sixth. Batted out, and a throw in for Duke. Sure-footed there for Percy. Took no chances that close to goal. Western Carolina preparing for their first substitutions of the contest. We asked Coach Church, how do you attack a compact defense? And one of the ways that he mentioned you can do it is shooting from distance. And we've seen that a few times now from Cooper and Pluck. Obviously, that's where the goal came from. Just over the boot that time of Bodie, who would have had a clean path to the goal if she could corral that one, unable to. But a nice job by Migley stepping in, winning possession for Duke. Yeah, the pressure continues for the Blue Devils. Cooper through the middle, no one home. A graduate transfer, Valentine Percy had it for a moment, but. Western Carolina lost it again. It's been the story of the first half for the Catamounts. Unable to get anything going against this dominant Duke defense. Brewster. Up this way for Cooper. That was better there from Abby Wise. Did not allow Cooper to turn. 
That's what I was referring to earlier. Force her to play the ball back where it came from. Don't just let her get north-south. Bodie turns, has a little bit of space to operate, but Western Carolina closes the gap quickly. Nice shield that time by the Catamounts, but the Blue Devils with a nice slide wins the possession. Bailey Brewster again making her first career start, making an impact for Duke in the first half. Mackenzie Plug trying to run this one down on the touch line and is tripped up near the goal. But we'll just get a play on here and the corner kick for Duke, the third of the match. You can just see the rhythm that those two have developed with each other early on in the season. Nicely weighted ball there by Cooper. Pluck has really good speed. Savvy in the box as well. Good at drawing contact. We've already seen a couple of penalty kicks that Pluck has helped win for the Blue Devils. Puts this one near the net and headed through that time. It looked like it was Katie Groff who was there for the Blue Devils, but was unable to head it in. Groff, somebody who really came on to establish a role last year, played the second most minutes on the team this season. Pretty good in the air. It's why she's one of the targets on those set pieces as the subs come on for the Catamounts. New quartet for Western Carolina, you can see on your screen. More of those underclassmen for the Catamounts. One of the players coming off, Valentine Percy, the graduate transfer. And now you wonder who does Western Carolina lead on for the experience on the field with so many young players. I think if you're head coach Chad Miller, you would just love to see the ball cross the middle third. And maybe an opportunity here for the Catamounts, but boy, Cooper closes the gap so quickly. And thwarts the chance there for the Catamounts. Cooper is not just a goal scorer. She puts the work in. Sometimes you have that, those all-stars show up, they don't want to <laughs> press back on defense, but she's, she's not afraid to put the time in. It's how you gain respect from your teammates, your coaches. And to make such an impact on both ends of the field as a rookie, phenomenal. Certainly making an early case for Perhaps freshman of the year in the ACC. Still hard, a long way to go. Yeah, hard to beat a goal a game pace, though. That's impressive stuff. Again, against two top 20 teams, and then back here again tonight. Through the middle, Cooper nearly had another opportunity, just a little too long for her. And possession stays with the Blue Devils. Delaney Graham wanted the foul, did not get the call from the lead referee. Just the throw in for Graham and Duke as we approach the final 18 minutes of this first half. You're just joining us, a goal by, who else? Michelle Cooper puts Duke on the board here early. Now Mackenzie Plug trying to get involved in the action. Batted around, and then finally out to the middle third, where it will go all the way back and be corralled by Royson. Been a pretty easy night for Ruthie Jones in net. Has not seen any chances her way. Has not even had to touch the ball yet. May not even have to launder the jersey. <laughs> Correct. After this one at this rate. I don't know, it's pretty humid just standing no, outside. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Good point. Another muggy day here in Durham as Duke will prepare for its first substitute of the contest. On comes Bria Schrodenbohr, transfer from Michigan State, all Big Ten freshman a couple of years ago. And you mentioned early on, Chris, that Coach Robbie Church wants to get some folks minutes, and 27 was one of the ones he very specifically mentioned in that regard. I was really anxious to see her. Good on the attack, good on defensive set pieces. Member of the U.S. Women's National Team, U-20 team as well, so has some international experience for the Blue Devils. Adding to the long list of international success that this Duke women's soccer program has had. Western Carolina trying to pressure a little more here, it appears, just to try to win a possession. But Cooper feeds one away, looking for an angle there. Nobody home, perhaps McKenzie plucked there at the top of the six and said it's Western Carolina, but ferries one out. 
possession still retained by Duke. Bodie right there for the Blue Devils. And now the Catamounts still doing their best to clear it, but Duke's so tough on the possession tonight. Everything has been played in Duke's attacking third of the field. Just suffocating. It's been absolutely suffocating for the Blue Devils here, first 30 minutes. Mackenzie Pluck. And that one rolls all the way back to the keeper, Owens. Mentioned the start for Mackenzie Pluck. Scored two goals in her first 22 games, but already two here in 2021. So she's been off to a hot start, along with Michelle Cooper. She's already had one game-winning goal. Scored the game winner against Washington in the 88th minute here last weekend. That game was such a good example of the impact that the combination of Cooper and Pluck can have. They were subbed off. Blue Devils conceded the tying goal to the Huskies. They come back on, and within five or six minutes, tallied the game winner. And Duke gets the result on its home field against the top 20 team. And that's, that's a really important goal. It's very early in the season. You tend not to want to overstate things, but a top 20 win in a non-conference game, that can hold a lot of weight come selection time. And for the Blue Devils, certainly they're not looking ahead, but Certainly the NCAA tournament is on the minds of this coaching staff. And those wins against SEC and Pac-12 competition will help when trying to decide what line Duke is going to be on in the bracket. And we'll have another two opportunities against the ACC and the Pac the SEC and the Pac-12 before league play begins. Duke will head to Vanderbilt on Sunday, and then we'll come back home to take on a very tough Stanford team here next weekend before closing down the non-conference with East Carolina. And then it doesn't get any easier. Your first conference game, North Carolina. Yeah, and then, oh, by the way, the ACC. <laughs> it's right. <laughs> what did you say, 50% of the top yes. 10? Resides in this league. Outrageous. Every year. Another banner year for the league in women's soccer. You want to watch good women's college soccer, better hope you have a subscription to the ACC network. It's on every night. If you're Western Carolina, Ryan, you, you've really had no chances. The ball has not been across the middle third tonight. Human nature to get frustrated and to try to do too much. How do the Catamounts guard against that? I think you have to realize, and I'm sure there were conversations about the reality of this situation. And I don't know that anybody wearing purple tonight thought they were going to come in and dominate this game. So to some extent, this may be what you expected. And so if it's what you expected, it might not be as frustrating. I think the key to turning it around, if you're Western Carolina, it's creating a turnover. And I know that might spread you out a little bit more if you start to press the Blue Devils, but you just don't get the sense they're going to be able to build something that's 80 yards, that's 15 passes to connect. It's going to have to be on a turnover, have to be something on the counter. Sophie Jones. Right back for Tess Bodie as Duke looks to build again. Bodie draws a crowd. There's Cooper who has the goal for the Blue Devils already. Drives another one to the back of the cage. And it's 2 nothing Duke. It's 2 nothing Michelle Cooper. Four in three games. Getting used to it, folks. 18 in white. It's a name you will see here. Right-footed, left-footed. Just has it all. There isn't a part of her game that you could point to and say, boy, that's that's a weakness that could be exploited. Already the brace for Cooper. And maybe a little early to think about, but Duke has not had a player with a hat trick since 2012. I don't think it's too early. The only thing that may keep Michelle Cooper from netting three tonight as a substitution pattern by Robbie Church. A sub for Western Carolina, Christina Layton, the rookie from Summerfield, North Carolina, checking in. And again, how do you defeat a defense with so many numbers behind the ball? Shoot from distance. It's worked twice for Michelle Cooper. 
as Ryan mentioned, already four goals in her first three games. Pretty good pace. We talked about building toward the future, good habits for Western Carolina. That actually applies to the Blue Devils tonight as well. This is one of those games where things could start to get loose as time goes on, where the result is less and less in question. It'll take a level of maturity for the Blue Devils to keep playing the game the right way and the way they want to play as this gets to 2-0, which it already is, and perhaps beyond that. And no call there in the middle of the field. A hard collision. We play on. Sophie Jones with the possession. There's Cooper. Now for Pluck. The Creed got the ball there. That's what the official said. Bodies went flying, but the ball was won. 50-50 ball. Western Carolina wins the possession. And now can the Catamounts sustain a possession? This might be the longest that Western Carolina has possessed for the first half. And a foul there on Duke, the first of the evening on the Blue Devils. It is Olivia Migley, who is the culpable party. Western Carolina in the attacking third for the first time this evening. Can the Catamounts build something? And Duke swarming. It'll be a throw in here for Western. Quickly engineering the toss. It's interesting to see how yeah. fast Western Carolina on that restart, back in their own end on the throw in. I would have thought they'd take a couple of deep breaths. But is that perhaps to counter Duke trying to get set there? It certainly could be. Mackenzie Pluck battling for Duke, and it'll be the throw in one for the Blue Devils. So not even a half chance there for Western Carolina, although they did reverse the field position, now forcing Duke to build an attack. And for the first time tonight, Ruthie Jones will get a possession. Just a quick touch for the Blue Devil keeper. And you wonder how long we will see Ruthie Jones tonight should the current trend hold. I think Robbie Church would like to sprinkle in players across the field, including at the keeper position. Through the middle, an opportunity here for Leighton. Leighton drives one, but knocked down easily by Jones. Yeah, much better for the Catamounts. Yeah. Last couple minutes, have some possession, put a shot on goal, never know what could happen. And perhaps most of all, just relieves pressure on your back line been playing with your back 20 yards from goal for practically the first 37 minutes. Bit of a whiff there, and Jones will have to settle this one. Quickly to Nebet. And now this way it comes for Brewster. Turnover there by Duke, just outside of the 18-yard box. Western Carolina retaining the possession. And Duke quickly able to funnel this one toward the touchline. Kept in by Pluck, and now look at Pluck trying to create some space for Duke. Fights through one defender. And now on ahead for Cooper, who already has the two Duke goals this evening. Cooper with some fancy footwork all the way through the middle. How about the rookie, Michelle Cooper? Certainly doesn't play like one. And that one funneled toward the top of the 18, held in by Duke. Now a drive from distance and a save made by Ashley Owens. Going back to that possession for Western Carolina on the other end, Schrodenbohr has experience at Michigan State, but not a ton in this system. Bailey Brewster, the freshman, a little bit of inexperience in that portion of the back line for Duke, and that's where that turnover occurred with a 2-0 cushion. That's part of what Coach Robbie Church is trying to get out of this game, get some minutes for some more lightly used players. 
Delaney Graham. Now to Mackenzie Pluck. It's one thing for the players that maybe don't see the lion's share of the minutes to learn things in training or in practice. A different when they're playing somebody else, is it not? Of course. Yeah, there's no duplicating playing outside competition in games where the results matter. It's the difference between preseason and regular season. Mackenzie Pluck spins away from a defender. Has Delaney Graham on the wing. It's Graham who picks this one up. Yeah, that's what you're trying to avoid. If you're Western Carolina, you, you have to make Pluck take a second touch. And she's shifty. She's crafty with that first touch. You see how easily, though, she was able to turn and face goal. In the end, Duke has had to regroup. But a full head of steam for Mackenzie Pluck presents all kinds of danger for a defense. Lillian Nabet now all the way back out to the middle third. Through a couple of defenders there. Better there with Pluck forced to lay it off. Bodie to Jones, right back to Bodie. Nice step through that time by Abby Lanhart from Western Carolina. Approaching the final five minutes of the opening stanza. Mackenzie Pluck to step through. And no foul called. We play on. But a throw in one by Bailey Brewster. Does it take some of the pressure off some of these other rookies, Brewster and the others, because Cooper is having such a phenomenal start to the season? I think it does in the sense that when you're playing with leads and when you know you can score goals, this Duke team the last few years has not had trouble preventing goals, but they just have not generated a lot of scoring. It's been a lot of 0-0, one nothing games. This does not feel like it's going to be that kind of year. And that takes a lot of pressure off. You don't, Coach Church talked about this. If you're not scoring, one mistake could cost you a game. And when you're playing, knowing that that's the case, that's, that can be difficult. That can be a heavy burden. And so many weapons already for Duke. And the other side of that, he was saying that's why his concern was some of the goals they were letting up, because there are going to be games where those shots don't go in. Mm -hmm. You can't assume you're going to score three goals a game. Flicked on, looking for Pluck. Nobody home. Duke trying to keep possession in their attacking third. Nabet was right there. Sophie Jones picks it up. Trying to get it to Cooper, but it comes back to Nabet. Yeah, Nabet 70 yards from goal, not allowing Catamounts to turn, keeping possession. Graham off her boot. Into the corner and throw in for Western Carolina. One of the things that Robbie Church told us was he wanted to see a better start from his club in the first half. Do you think he's pleased with so far the first 42 minutes of this game? Coaches are never totally satisfied, so I'm sure he could come up with a, a point or two that he might change or, or modify or enhance, but a 2-0 score line with about three minutes to go in the first half. They've generated a ton of chances. They've possessed the ball for nearly the entire half, haven't given up anything really dangerous at all. One shot from pretty far outside that Ruthie Jones had no trouble with, so I do think it's mission accomplished for the Blue Devils at this point. Obviously, obviously still a lot of soccer left to be played, but certainly a good start for Duke in terms of accomplishing their game plan, as you mentioned. Through the middle and into the box. Nobody home there for the Blue Devils. I think the interesting question would be, if you ask Coach Miller, have you done what you thought you would do or what you were trying to do? And if you came into the game and said, okay, you're going to concede two goals in the first half, but they'll both be from 20 yards out, you probably live with that. You don't love that you're giving up goals, but you're not getting sliced and diced. And there aren't a ton of athletes they're going to see in conference play that can rip shots from distance like Michelle Cooper. So if that's all you're conceding, that's not a bad day. Trying to settle that one for Western Carolina was Marion Kilgore unable to do so, and it'll be another throw in here for the Blue Devils. 
final 99 seconds of the opening half. Michelle Cooper has scored the only goals of the contest. We'll see if Cooper gets any time in the second half, and we'll see what the substitution pattern looks like for Duke head coach Robbie Church. If I were to guess, I'm thinking Michelle Cooper's night is done at halftime. Barring a comeback by the Catamounts. Would have said that the other day against Washington as well, and that's when the Huskies scored. Now it's 60 seconds. The one thing the Blue Devils have to avoid is giving up an easy opportunity and maybe a chippy goal. This is an opportunity for Kristen Hahn. Kirsten Hahn has some help. Now this way it comes for Cisco. And the Blue Devils are able to send this one toward the wide side of the field. Final 40 seconds here. Culliver. Jones trying to step through. It takes possession for Duke. But it dangerous. Exactly what we talked about. It's not going to be the 15 pass buildup. It's going to be the turnover that turns into a chance. And it nearly happened for Han here in the final minute of the first half. And that's something else Robbie Church was concerned about. His team has allowed those soft goals, as he called them, nearly an opportunity for Western Carolina. Ten, nine, eight, and now can the Catamounts seven, build one with the final eight, five seconds? Five, Allen chipped four, away, and that three, should take us to the intermission. A 2-0 lead for the Blue Devils as we reach halftime here at Koskinen Stadium. Michelle Cooper off to a great start again tonight. She scored both of the Blue Devils' goals. Blue Devils. And it begins with Maddie Nielsen there in the net. So the night done for Ruthie Jones as well. And really, outside of maybe one or two players, an entirely new lineup for the Blue Devils. I think it's an entirely yeah. new lineup relative to who started. Schrodenbohr came on in the first half. Don't know if anybody else appeared. Kaitlin Cosme normally a starter for Duke. She's back there on that back line. Coach Robbie Church wanting a veteran presence there, working with some of the youngsters. But so far, so good. If you're Coach Robbie Church, you've checked the first box. You've gotten the goals you wanted. You've made the substitutes you've wanted. Now, of course, you want to see this second unit play really well. You have experienced players out there. Mary Kate McGuire is an established scorer. Of course, Caitlin Cosme, we mentioned her already. Maggie Graham has started games for the Blue Devils. It's not like the second unit is just going to lay down for the Catamounts. This is a team, even the second 11 for Duke, that has a chance to do some damage here this evening. You mentioned play well. Is there an expectation for Robbie Church of what play well means for him in this second half? I think it's it's just execute whatever the game plan is. And I don't know if it's as much about goals as it is connecting passes, playing a good possession game, not creating chances for your opponent, not turning the ball over in your own defensive third of the field. This way it comes for the Blue Devils. Trying to get to the corner is Grace Watkins. And feathered out by Western Carolina, but a throw in deep in Duke's attacking end here for the Catamounts. Riley Terry back out there for Western after starting the first half. Played in a lot of games in her Catamount career. One of the few upperclassmen on this team, a junior on Coach Miller's squad. We mentioned it at the top, 20 underclassmen for this Western Carolina squad, relying on a pair of graduate transfer. The future bright in Cullowee might be tough for Western Carolina tonight, but certainly feels like this is a program that's trending in the right direction. That's yeah, a good start for Watkins, drawing the corner kick. It's the fourth corner that Duke has created here this evening. And Cosme will join the fray. Half a dozen goals a year ago, led all ACC defensemen in that category, often a target on these set pieces. Headed away for the moment by the Catamounts, then blasted on cage, and finally a nice save made there on the sprawl by Ashley Owens. Owens, who was tested in the first half, good on her first test here in the second 45. Owens has been solid for Western Carolina in this game, beaten twice from distance, but on good shots, nothing soft, well positioned there. Owens, not just a soccer player, also competes in Olympic weightlifting. 
two-time national champion, finished sixth in the nation at the Nationals in 2017. Threw some pressure. Chico. Now for Sydney Simmons. They play it to the wide side of the field, and there's Cosme. Into the 18. This is a left-footed chance for the Blue Devils. Katie Groff, I believe, got a chance on that one. And it's, again, Owens who makes good on the stop. That was deflected in front of Owens. I think it was Mary-Kate McGuire that took the shot. And Owens able to gather it in after the ricochet. That was not an easy save. Now another chance for Duke. This is Watkins. She'll go and hit the crossbar. Tried to shoot one from just outside the 18. Another great look for Duke. That was hammered by Grace Watkins. Watkins with another opportunity, perhaps. Sends one toward the top of the six. Nobody home there. Was looking for Niki Chico. And then pinballed around. And it'll be another corner won by the Blue Devils. You were wondering what Coach Church would want from this group to start the second half. We're seeing it. This is exactly what he had in mind. No let off, no let up. As Watkins bangs it off the crossbar. Fifth corner for Duke. Come on. Watkins toward the middle. And then batted right back toward the goal. I believe that was Graham that got the boot on it. Maggie Graham, sister of Delaney. Very technical player. It's really big for the Blue Devils in terms of connecting passes. Getting some valuable play here in the second half. And the Duke press causing issues once again for the Catamounts. Just no room for Western Carolina to operate offensively tonight. One shot for the Catamounts in the first half. And now the Blue Devils again. Oh, what a pass. Still on the possession from McGuire, who drives one toward the net and scores. Mary-Kate McGuire with her first of the season, and it's 3-0 Duke. Quite the luxury when you can bring an accomplished goal scorer like Mary Kate McGuire off the bench. Nice finish there. All started with this pass, though. Look at Graham beats about six players with that pass. Eventually ends up on the foot of McGuire, who just buries it in behind Owens. And the first of the season for McGuire, 3 0 Duke. Julia Burnell credited with the assist. Burnell has worked her way back from multiple ACL injuries. Burnell had those two ACLs after committing to the Blue Devils. And as you mentioned, is rehabbed and now into the lineup for Robbie Church here in the second half. Really good with the ball. I think the Blue Devils are really excited about Julia Burnell, the native of Glen Mills, Pennsylvania. Just speaks to the depth that this club has. Through traffic, another opportunity perhaps for the Blue Devils. Instead, Western Carolina there to deny that opportunity. But more pressure from Duke keeps the possession. And not that it's this simple, but the second unit scoring even faster than the first. Chico in the middle, and that ball was right there on the boot, but chipped away by the Catamounts. And I say that just to accentuate the idea that there's just, there's no give with the second 11. A ton of pressure creating chances immediately out of the gates. But for this second 11, isn't it also about, hey, let's show the coaching staff that we can also play and we deserve more playing time. We deserve a chance to be part of that starting group. This is absolutely an opportunity to showcase what you're able to do. What role can you play for this team? Another corner kick won by the Blue Devils. 
Far post headed out by Western Carolina. The possession remains with Duke. Nobody home there and a bit of a miss hit that time for the Blue Devils. I think it was McNally on the clearing header there. Really nicely done. Assertive. A lot of bodies around. McNally has started every game in her college career, whether that's at IUPUI, where she finished her undergrad, or for Western Carolina. Had the game-winning goal against Asheville. A game that the Catamounts won 2-1 to one after their season opening setback against North Florida. But tonight, as we mentioned earlier, begins a three-game road trip for Western Carolina. And this is where it's been so challenging for Western Carolina in, in the obvious in dealing with Duke's potent attack, but it's been even when they've possessed the ball, haven't had any room to orchestrate much of anything. Plenty of room for Duke to orchestrate tonight. And they try another opportunity here. A left-footed blast is punched away by Owens and will result in another corner for the Blue Devil. Impressive that Graham was able to get that much on that shot. That ball was sort of caught in her feet and still came up with the goods. Didn't get the full extension there, just almost passed it toward the goal, but Plenty of pace. No one's electing to punch it up over the bar instead of trying to catch the ball. Corner kick number seven for Duke is headed out again. Blue Devils asking for the ball to be off of Western Carolina. I believe that the argument was one for Duke. It'll be another corner. Graham again involved. Nice start for her. Another one of those players, perhaps, trying to co show this coaching staff what she can do. Much like the first half, the ball has been in this end of the field for the majority of the contest, and sprawling is Owens to make another save. That was McGuire on the end of that one and trickled in toward Owens. She's had a pinball machine in front of her here in the last few minutes, ball bouncing off of defenders and attacking players alike. Owens puts it in play. And I believe we get a handball call here on the Blue Devils. I think it might have been a shove in the back yes. by Graham. Either way, though, a foul on the Blue Devils. And see if the Catamounts take their time on this restart. It's been going pretty fast in the first half. Surprised they've gone so fast on the restart? At that time, a bit. There was just relentless pressure for the Blue Devils. I would have thought it would have been a good opportunity just to Take a few breaths. A couple of 50-50 balls still loose. Nobody able to settle the possession. And now Duke comes away with it, as they have for much of the contest. That's nice. a nice ball from Chico. Yep. Good through ball there. On ahead. McGuire on a run, but a defender stepping through for Western Carolina. McNally read the passing lane well there. And the Catamounts will once again be forced to build from the back here. Doesn't it appear that the strategy for Western Carolina has changed a whole lot here in the second half. Sometimes you can want to change the strategy and the other team doesn't let you. And Duke just hasn't given the Catamounts much of a chance to do a whole lot. They just haven't seen the ball very much. When they've gotten the ball, it's in their own defensive third. There's not a ton you can do there, especially when you're facing the kind of press that Duke has employed this evening. We mentioned it earlier, just the five practices or, or sessions for Western Carolina as a group before their preseason started and obviously had one preseason game, the other was canceled. So for Western Carolina, really playing their fourth game of the season, a unit that's still trying to learn one another, at what point do things start to gel for a club? If you're the coach, you hope it's before conference play. That's usually the line of demarcation. You're willing to learn and maybe not necessarily get the results until that point. That one chipped away, not out. McGuire is there. And then Watkins sends that one just wide of the cage. Might have been chipped on the way by. 
Graham bearing down there, and that one nearly deflecting in on the tackle. And these two coaches have known each other for a long time, Ryan. Obviously, Ro Robbie Church played at Pfeiffer, member of the Pfeiffer Hall of Fame, has done just a tremendous job as the head coach of the Blue Devils in his 21st season. But Chad Miller for Western Carolina, no stranger to Pfeiffer either. Played after Robbie Church, was the head coach at Pfeiffer, and now in his 12th season at Western Carolina. So all those little idiosyncrasies and the intrinsic moments in collegiate athletics showing itself here tonight. Chad Miller's favorite part about that graphic, all the Robbie Church years, 70s and 80s, <laughs> all of his years, 90s and 2000s. Pretty cool connection, though, for two gentlemen that have known each other for a long time. And there's another Pfeiffer player, and there's Owens makes another sprawling save and nearly another opportunity for the Blue Devils. It will result, though, in a goal kick. The associate head coach for Western Carolina, Todd Herman, also played at Pfeiffer with Chad Miller. And those two have been longtime friends. They actually started coaching by coaching a U11 team together. Yeah, dream come true for those two guys to be working together on a college sideline. McGuire really had a nice start to this second half. She's already got the goal, and Owens just gets a forearm on that one. Otherwise, it's 4-0 to the Blue Devils. Talked about the opportunity for the second team, the second unit, and that's a crowded front line for the Blue Devils. But McGuire certainly making her case to earn significant minutes and keep really the role that she's carved out for herself. Been really, really good since coming on at halftime. Another near turnover by Western Carolina. And now the Blue Devils do gain possession. This is Watkins, who sends one to the back of the cage and in. Another drive from distance, and it's 4-0 Duke. The first of the season for Grace Watkins. If there was any question as to the strength of Grace Watkins' leg, the answer has been provided here at Koskinen Stadium tonight. I think she dented the crossbar a few minutes ago, and then this one just blasted past Owens. That reminded me of a, an outfielder. Chris, you called a lot of baseball. They hear the crack of the bat, and they don't even move for the ball because they know it's over the fence. Owens, as soon as that left the foot of Watkins, knew there was no catching that. The first of the season for the Gatorade State Player of the Year in California. I've been really impressed by this second 11 for the Blue Devils. Two goals in 14 minutes. And up to play that one easily is Maddie Nielsen, the transfer from Minnesota, won a Big Ten title in 2018. And how about this Duke connection for Nielsen, who has to fight through a little traffic in front of her and gets it away, was trained by Allie Lipscher, former Blue Devil at Minnesota, who's now the goalkeeping coach with Kansas City in the NWSL. Lipscher. In goal for the Blue Devils, the only other time these teams played. A 1-0 shutout win for Duke. Back in 2006. Nielsen recorded three straight shutouts, led the Gophers to a Big Ten tournament title in 2018, and was the defensive most outstanding player, playing in her 46th career game tonight. We've seen the front line depth for Duke tonight with Watkins and McGuire both coming on to score after halftime. Blue Devils have some depth between the pipes as well. Obviously, this is exactly what Duke wanted to happen with this second unit. But from a, a coaching staff perspective, knowing how good this unit is, how much confidence does this, does this give Robbie Church and his staff knowing that he could put any of these players out on the pitch and they're going to make an impact? And look, you don't want to jinx anything, but there are very few seasons you get through without any bumps in the road. Somebody might tweak an ankle, and it's really comforting as a staff to know that you have proven players that you can plug in to different places on the field and not see the level drop dramatically. And anybody that's watched this game tonight, there has been no level drop. None. And give Western Carolina a lot of credit. They're continuing to, to fight and, and hustle through some of these 50-50 balls. I mean, the competitive nature in you, I imagine, will not let you quit in a game like this. No, and, and again, it goes back to what the realistic expectation for this game 
was all along. And you're never conceding. And you certainly don't do it before the game starts, but this was learning mode tonight. And still with more than half of this second half remaining, what do you think the big takeaway for Western Carolina, what have they learned about themselves through this juncture of the game? I think they've learned that Duke's really good, first of all. <laughs> sure. That they're, they're glad they're not going to see the Blue Devils in conference play. But also that they just got to tighten the screws a little bit defensively and, and maybe be aware of shots from distance. Three out of Duke's four goals. And maybe another one here for the Blue Devils. Is that one into the box? Nobody home there. Possession still for Duke, and it's punched into the back of the cage. Another goal for Duke. It's Julia Burnell who puts it in the back of the cage, and after rehabbing from those two ACLs, Burnell is there to get involved, and it might have actually been Emmy Dewar who put it in. It was indeed Dewar. It was Burnell on the assist, though. She's got a pair of helpers, I believe, in this game. There's Burnell, and then it was indeed Dewar who finishes for the Blue Devils. Yeah, cool moment for both of those players and for their teammates. You can always tell what people think of their teammates by the way they celebrate their goals and the exuberance that Duke showed in a 5-0 game was not your average 5-0 celebration. And you can tell the work that Brunel has put in, that Dewar has put in, teammates are happy for them. 5-0 here in the second half, three goals since halftime. But very quickly back to the catamounts, sure. it's one thing, clearly, they're, they're for the most part, preventing Duke from getting inside the 18-yard box and taking chances. The problem is they're allowing these strikes from distance that are going in. I mean, you, you know, it doesn't necessarily help you if you're still conceding the goals. You don't, there aren't style points or anything like that. And so Cooper twice, Watkins once, that's an element that if you're going to play compact, Coach Miller talked about how this is a little bit of a dress rehearsal if they're up in a game late, how they're going to finish off a game with numbers behind the ball. So as they're learning through this opportunity, that's something to keep in mind. Okay, how do we stay compact without giving something up 18 to 25 yards away like they have on a couple of occasions here this evening? If, if you're looking for a positive for Western Carolina so far tonight, maybe one or two things that the Catamounts have done well so far, what do you think that is? It's it's hard. It's 5 nothing. Sure. You don't want to sort of over-celebrate. You don't want to be unrealistic about what's going on out here. Not into a moral victory. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, at some point, I think it's hard to come up with positives, but it's it's easier to come up with things where th these are lessons that need to be learned. You know, I don't know they're going to come out of here celebrating anything, but they will come out with plenty on the whiteboard to go over in their training to come over the next few weeks. And they'll be able to do it against opponents that don't have absolute studs coming off the bench, bombing away from 25 yards. And now perhaps another opportunity for McGuire, who puts one on cage, but hits the short side there, and it'll be another goal kick for the Catamounts. No, they say it was... Last touch by Western Carolina. Yeah, corner, kick. Yep. corner kick for Duke. Another chance for the Blue Devils, who have generated plenty of them. Be their ninth of the contest. And boy, it has been a busy night for Ashley Owens, the Western Carolina keeper. Six saves. And already the five goals for the Blue Devils, searching for another here. Loose in front. And it's McGuire who keeps the possession for Duke. Funneled into the box, headed on, and another diving save. Yeah, it's a tricky save. Whenever there's a serve on goal like that, you have to treat it as if it's going to come all the way through and be a shot, but you're anticipating a deflection as well, and so you're really trying to figure out where that ball is going to end up. It was slightly deflected. Owens, in the end, made a relatively easy save. Talking about things to build on for Western Carolina, as you can see the domination there by Duke, 22 shots, just one for the Catamounts. If you're Duke, you're up 5-0, still 25 minutes to go 
in this contest as Duke with another turnover here, searching for another goal. Knocked down, still loose, a drive, and another goal for the Blue Devils. Classy finish there for Dewar. Calm as you like on the half volley. She's got a brace. Eyes, I'm sure, like saucers. When a ball is bouncing like that in the AT, that's the stuff that you do you, when you're in training. You're just kind of bouncing the ball to yourself and hammering it at the goal, thinking this is never actually going to happen in a game, but it feels really good. Doer, though, really composed. Would have been very easy to overhit that. Trying to strike it 100 miles an hour, put it in the parking lot behind the fence. Instead, buries it in the back of the net. She joins Cooper with two apiece. And more substitutions for Duke. Rookie Kelly Wilson checking in. For the Wilson lineage is a long one at Duke. Her sister is a junior at Duke, plays club lacrosse. Sister Emily played soccer here for the Blue Devils. Her other sister Megan, cross country and track and field at Stanford. So the Wilson sisters, a lot of athletics in that household. Imagine the competition was pretty fierce when they were growing up. It's a shame none of them accomplished anything academically or athletically. Stanford and Duke? Yeah, yeah. tough. And Wilson a chance, the rookie, to continue to grow into the college speed. So tough for some of these young players when you come from the club or the high school ranks where maybe you can dominate those games and you get to the Division I level, the ACC, where the game is so quick and so physical. It's one of the things you hear, almost regardless of sport. Duke building another opportunity. And that's the pace of play, the speed at which decisions have to be made, at which things have to be executed, the jump from high school to college. It's one of the hardest adjustments for most student athletes to make. Western Carolina out toward the middle. And nobody home there on that run. Nice job by Duke to step in front. That was Julia Burnell, who's had a nice second half. But back to the point earlier, if you're Duke and you're up 6-0, there are teachable moments in this game for Robbie Church and his staff. As he reviews the film and goes back and gets Duke ready for Vanderbilt later this week, what are they going to be? The two or three glaring things that he's going to want to address with his club in training. I think at this point, number one from the rest of, from 23 minutes on down to the final whistle, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing on the field? Chico feathers that one over top of the cage. Everybody out there right now still has a role to play. They've got a job to do. There's an X's and O's component to what They've learned in training and film sessions. And if you just start drifting away from that and, you, and you're just making it about yourself, you're playing individual soccer, that is not going to make Coach happy. There's no result in the world. There's no amount of goals on the scoreboard that a coach is going to make a coach enjoy that. So that's, I think, number one. Number two, it's, it's growth from certain players. Can Grace Watkins build on this, continue to be a significant contributor. Can Mary Kate McGuire do the same? And Watkins on the ball right now. Watkins got tied up in traffic, fights through it. And plays one back for Graham. And there's been no slacking off or taking of time for the Blue Devils. They're still in attack mode as McGuire sneaks through looking for her second of the night. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I've been most impressed by the last little while here for Duke when the result was all but chiseled in stone. It's how many things are happening out there that wouldn't happen if it was 0-0? Zero, zero? And I, I don't feel like there have been many, if any, where it's okay, well, yeah, you can tell it's 6 nothing because that just happened. It just it hasn't felt that way. It feels like Duke has the same approach right now as it did in the first 20 minutes of this game when it was scoreless. Obviously, some of that are the 11 on the field wanting to make an impact and wanting to state their claim to more opportunities on the pitch. 
But is some of that also the culture that's been built in this Duke women's soccer program? And I think those are hand in hand. Part of the culture is wanting to get out there and prove yourself and take advantage of opportunities, the competitive nature of their training. The gaps, the margins in a lot of these positions are not huge. And so if you come on in a game like this and you put on a show, maybe that earns you a start next time. Mary-Kate McGuire is there. Now Watkins, that one deflected. And Western trying to keep it off that touch line, but it'll be another corner kick awarded to Duke, the 10th of the contest. Watkins trying to join the two-goal club. Burnell and Bodie have two assists apiece. Watkins again will take the service. 25 shots for the Blue Devils in this game. And just one for the Catamounts. Service in. Nobody home on the through ball there. Blue Devils trying to recover, and then the Catamounts able to bat it away out toward the middle third. And the nice thing for Duke, in all likelihood, Schrodenborg going to be the only student athlete to log more than 45 minutes in this game. I mean, it's just all gone according to plan. It's so many times as a coach, best laid plans ruined by something or another at the start of the game, but just about everything that Robbie Church could have asked for here tonight. Put toward the cage, there's Owens. And how, how important is that for Duke to be able to save some of the minutes with such a compact schedule to start the season? It's huge. We talked about the Vanderbilt game on the horizon during the Open. We're gonna take on the Commodores on the road. And a chance for Duke to get on the road. They've enjoyed the comfort of Koskinen Stadium for the first week and a half of this regular season, beating Arkansas and Washington last weekend. The game tonight, then at Vanderbilt. Seems important for any team to get on the road and face some challenges away from their home venue. Yeah, this is a Duke team that has its sights set on a one seed. Now let's just call it what it is. This is a talented, talented team. Offside there on Western Carolina. The road result against Vanderbilt would certainly go a long way to accomplishing that mission. Four goals for the Blue Devils here in the second half, and really it was Duke getting going in the early stages of this second stanza. Mary-Kate McGuire putting her first in. Watkins blasting that one from distance, and then Emmy Doerr, a couple. The first for Doerr now. Look at that wide open target for Doerr. So a pair of Blue Devils now with the brace. You see the goals per half. Everything going right for the team in white this evening. And now for the Blue Devils, does the attention turn to we've got everything accomplished. Now we're still in attack mode, but want to be cautious with maybe how aggressively we're going after balls as to avoid some of those injuries? Or is it still attack, attack, attack for this group of 11? Yeah, sometimes in sports, when you're trying to avoid injuries, you're trying to take your foot off the gas a little bit. That's when that stuff tends to happen. And so I think you're just playing the game, play it out. Continue to execute. Through the middle. Again, some of the players on the field right now, they don't necessarily know, especially with the schedule that Duke is playing. McGuire again, and Owens there to bat it down. Catamounts get it. Might be McGuire's biggest strength, the ability to post up a defender, turn and shoot inside the 18-yard box. It's kind of her bread and butter. McGuire not necessarily someone that falls in this category, but there are certainly some players out there right now. You don't necessarily know the next time you're going to see significant minutes. And so you want to take full advantage. You're not out there just simply to run the clock down. You want to make something happen. This is Watkins on the wing. Through the middle, McGuire. And Western able to come away with the possession. 
The possessions for the Catamounts tonight have been so few and far between. Everything for Duke has gone right. And Western Carolina trying to toss that one in, even though they were not awarded the throw in. Marianne Kilgore just wanted to get a little bit of the action there. Kilgore comes from an athletic family. Her dad, or bigger partner, grandfather, Joe, played in the NFL for five seasons. That one chipped over the top of the cage. Another look that time from Watkins. We talked about the schedule for the Blue Devils that's coming up. Obviously, the game against Vanderbilt coming up later on this weekend for Duke. It'll be their first road test of the season. But what's after that contest? Well, a chance to take on Stanford here in early September, and then the Blue Devils close down non-conference against East Carolina. Yeah, that Washington Huskies game already in the bag, got the result. They're going to get one here against Western Carolina, certainly. And then Vandy, Stanford on ACC Network Extra. Cardinal always in the mix late. I mean, these are, these are sweet 16, quarterfinal, semi-college cup type teams. Duke is playing out of the gate. And then you mentioned at North Carolina, at Virginia, to start ACC play. <laughs> Doesn't get any easier. No, it's certainly going to be a challenging start to the season. But the Blue Devils certainly look well prepared. You know, sometimes you, you start a year and you kind of find our rhythm. We got to introduce new pieces. Kind of an odd off season with the spring competitive schedule. Duke looks ready for ACC play right now. And Duke obviously played a really tough exhibition schedule as well against Georgia and Clemson. Do you feel like those two matches have prepared the Blue Devils for this gauntlet to start the year? I think it's a great point. You know, at Clemson, a top 10 team. Um, and granted, everybody might be playing different rotations of players, but to just to see that pace. We talked about the speed at which you have to make decisions. Clemson is going to play high-level soccer. And so it's not like this is the first time, you know, it's not like the first time when you get to the regular season, okay, now now everybody's trying, now everybody's playing fast. We have to make that adjustment. They'd already seen some of that from the Tigers. Another opportunity perhaps for the Blue Devils building as it's chipped away. And it'll be possession back to Western Carolina here. It was Nikki Chico on the run there for the Blue Devils. Western Carolina, the match tonight, beginning a three-game road swing for the Catamounts. They'll be at Gardner-Webb and at Davidson before taking on Longwood and then Liberty. And then they will finish up non-conference schedule with UT Martin and then Ohio. So a lot of road tests for the Catamounts coming up before they begin their Southern Conference schedule. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Yes, and Ziggy. certainly no disrespect to any of those programs, but the Catamounts will be able to do more in those games than they were tonight. And lucky for the Catamounts, a little bit of time to, to get things going in conference play before they take on Furman, who was always a perennial power in the Southern Conference. And another change for Duke in net, Holly Stam will come in, playing in just now her third career match for the Blue Devils. But is one of the team captains, Robbie Church saying, you know, speaks volumes to who she is, such a good teammate that even though she may not have the time in net that she would like, she's been voted by her teammates as one of their captains. 33 minutes in the book for Nielsen before giving way to Stam, third goalkeeper of the evening for the Blue Devils. Said before that coaches always have something to complain about. Coach Robbie Church might have to dig a little deeper than usual to find <laughs> those complaints after this one. It's been thorough, comprehensive. Boy, this is obviously there is a talent gap in this contest between these two clubs, but hard not to be impressed by everyone Duke has put on the pitch tonight and the effort in which they have played with. It's one thing to have a disparity in talent. It's a whole other thing to take advantage of it. And Duke has left no doubt 
here this evening. And that's certainly not to take anything away from Western Carolina. No, not at all. 2 nothing at halftime, four here in half number two. One of the things that Chad Miller, the Western Carolina head coach, said to us is we can't put Duke on a pedestal, have to come out and play their game. And obviously the Catamount season is not going to live or die with the result here in this contest tonight. But do you have to worry a little bit about, hey, we gave up six goals? So where, where does Western Carolina, in terms of morale, go from here? Yeah, I think it's a really good question because it – it speaks a little bit to what we were talking about before. What were your expectations coming in? It's such an interesting... You don't want to go into a game expecting to lose. At the same time, if you're being realistic, a result here at Koskinen was probably unlikely, so it's easier to... As easy as it can be to take a 6 nothing loss, it maybe is. This is Cisco through some traffic, and a nice save there by Holly Stamp. Stamp in the books. Her second career save. Left-footed boot, and Stam quickly on the ball there. Cisco led the team in assists in the spring. Led the league as well. And they are calling her own number. Seen a lot of success in this game. Shooting from just about that same spot, that same distance. Surprised that Western Carolina still has so many of their starters in the contest? I'm actually not, and, and it's because, again, the the role of this game really is to prepare for conference play. And so your starters getting as much time against a juggernaut like this, as long as you can cope with the piece that you just mentioned a moment ago, and that's the, the frustration potentially of, of conceding half a dozen goals, but getting a chance to work against this pace of play I think will benefit this group. Good ball, but the Blue Devils offside there. Do her Looking for the hat trick. A little over anxious there in the final nine minutes. Blue Devils have not had a hat trick since 2012. Caitlin Kerr against Loyola Marymount. Eight and a half minutes remaining from Koskinen Stadium. This contest much different than the only other one these two clubs played back in 2006 was a 1-0 victory for the Blue Devils. Just outside the box, a bit of a tardy call, but a foul nonetheless, and a great chance for a set piece here for the Blue Devils. Yeah, McGuire going to that trademark post-up move. Fouled a step outside the box. I think it's the proper call. Abby Wise, the rookie, the guilty party there. And now the Blue Devils perhaps in a prime position for their seventh tally of the contest. And that one wide of the cage. Blue Devils had a couple of bodies in front, but unable to drive one to the back of the net. McGuire was frustrated with herself that she couldn't put that one on frame. Did well to get ahead on it. Well placed by Watkins on the service. Now we're seeing some more substitutions for the Catamounts. A couple of the regulars are out as we count down the final seven minutes of this contest. Mentioned it earlier, Ashley Owens playing for the injured Melody Mesna for Western Carolina. But that's going to build some depth for the Catamounts, too, as their season goes along. And despite the contest tonight, not the result that anyone was hoping for in, in terms of the goalkeeper giving up six, but still some confidence and still some depth being built at the keeper position for Western. I think Owens has played pretty well, mm -hmm. to be honest. She made seven saves. A lot of those pretty high-quality deflections in front. Some of the goals that were allowed in this game, there's not a lot of goalies in the country that are going to make those saves. I mean, the half volley from Dewar is just a layup at this level. Not a whole lot you're going to do about that. Cooper bombs away twice. Watkins 
blasting that one from distance once again. There's not a whole lot you're going to do about that. I think as Coach Chad Miller breaks down this game, one of the bright spots will be Ashley Owens. Mm -hmm. And maybe a goalkeeping competition brewing for the Catamounts as well. Yeah, and we certainly don't know exactly where those two stood in terms of the competition or what the injury situation is like, but I don't think Ashley Owens has hurt herself, hurt her candidacy, especially with how much she brings to the locker room. As we approach the last five minutes, Blue Devils certainly have this one well in control. Watkins. Oh, outside of the foot. Very nice. Follies it in. McGuire is there, and Owens makes another nice stop. That's a really nice ball from Watkins. A heavy touch there for McGuire. Grace Watkins has been really, really good. The service a moment ago on the set piece. Playing that one forward there. Of course, she's got the goal. Really nice second half for Watkins here in this game. Duke still on the attack. This is Wilson. And this is what I mean. Duke still switching the point of attack, still playing the game. 6 0. There's four and a half minutes left. Be so easy at this point to get lazy. Wilson again. And the Catamounts come away with it for a moment. We talked about how good this group for Duke can be. Robbie Church saying this is a team that reminds him a lot of the teams that went to the College Cup in 2015, 2017. Obviously a long way to go in this season. Coach Church saying the group's not there yet, but certainly has the talent. Where are the areas, as you look at this group as a whole, where Duke still maybe has work to do as they wrap up non-conference? Yeah, and I don't know that it's to say that it's a weakness, but I think it's unproven, and it's the back line. That is... The, the offensive production, Pluck, Cooper, McGuire, Watkins, Bodie, that seems like it's a known quantity at this point. It's been established Duke is going to score goals this year. It's going to be hard to continuously keep that offense in check. What we don't know yet, and it was some of the question that Coach Robbie Church as Wilson has that one blocked away. It was one of the question marks. Talked about conceding goals. And I don't know that we've learned a lot more tonight about that because Western Carolina hasn't possessed the ball. And they, they broke up their back line. Cosme comes on in the second half. So rather than say it's a, it's a, a shortcoming, it's more like we just don't know enough about that, in my opinion, yet, about how this Duke back line is going to perform. If history is any guide, by the way, they're going to be just fine. Service in. And headed wide of the cage. It looked like it was Sarah Piper there in front that got the head on that one. Just wide of the net. Piper, that's what she does. Maybe best. Winning balls in the air. She's a target on set pieces and shows you why there. But it's Schrodenbohr. It's Brewster. It's Royson. Haven't necessarily had a ton of time. Cosme, everybody knows what she can do. Groff, you know, came on last year, but these are not you know, three and four year starters for the most part for the Blue Devils in the back line. And you, you know, you might be splitting hairs when you start talking about stuff like that. But I think that's the that's the area. If you were to start going down the list of what do we know about Duke, that that might be the one spot that we don't necessarily know. And again, could very well be the strength that it usually is. But a little TBD as opposed to what we've seen from Pluck and Cooper and the rest so far. But it, but it are it is those small differences when you play in this league where 50% of the league, 50% of the top 10, it is the first five teams in the country. You have those small little things that separate team one from team five. There's no doubt. The ACC is going to be decided by the slimmest of margins. As it is every year. Now that ACC tournament is practically the College Cup. And it's played in the same facility where you will play at College Cup. Pretty nice to have that in your backyard if you're the ACC. Yeah, great facility just down the road. 
Final 60 seconds ticking off here from Koskinen Stadium. Duke will move to 3-0 on the campaign as they get prepared to take their first road trip to Nashville this weekend. For the Blue Devils, certainly mission accomplished tonight, really in all facets of the contest. Yeah, half a dozen goals, clean sheet, barring something happening here in the last 40 seconds. So many different athletes seeing the field, getting quality playing time. Three goalkeepers. Four different goal scorers. A pair of braces. Yeah, Cooper continuing her hot start. Two of your reserve attacking players, maybe building some confidence here, finding the back of the net. Congratulations to Julia Burnell and Emmy Dewar. Great production from them here this evening. 6-0, Blue Devils they get the result here at Koskinen. Will complete the clean sheet, their first of the season. Ryan, your overall thoughts on this one? You said it, mission accomplished. Uh, you can try to describe that in as many words as you want. Sometimes all it takes is two. Cooper celebrates, Watkins smiling. Mary Kate McGuire into the scoring column as well. Terrific job by the Blue Devils to do what they were supposed to do in this game. Sometimes it's not easy to do what you're supposed to do, but the Blue Devils certainly did. Duke accomplishing everything they wanted to accomplish tonight.